Hello and welcome to another episode of Dazatron's Diorama Llama. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a Dungeons and Dragons mimic. And this is a sculpture challenge. So I got this idea from watching another YouTuber called Tech Chucker. And I'd highly recommend his channel if you are interested in making kind of full scale dioramas um, rather than kind of the bases that I make on this channel. Um, there's tutorials on there and there's also kind of showcases of other people's work. So it's definitely worth a look. But he set a challenge at the end of last year to make a fire hydrant using just kind of hand tools. So no kind of electric tools like the foam cutter I often use. And so I thought, what a great idea. I'd set myself a challenge just to use a block of styrofoam, hand tools and see what I could come up with. So as I've just kind of been working on a Dungeons and Dragons diorama, as you've seen in my earlier video, um, I thought a great opportunity to kind of make something for that display. So just some of the tools that you might need, um, as you just saw, a floristry knife and a scalpel, some files, um, a handsaw, a sharpie and pencil or felt tip would do. Um, a ball of foil for adding texture and a kind of wire brush tool, which is also for adding texture. Um, a ruler, because you will need to measure out parts of this if you're having a go at this particular tutorial. But you, you can make what you want, really. So the aim of this, as I said, is to do something more sculptural. Um, that's going to have that bit extra detail in there and just to see what I can do. Because uh, this, this is a challenge for, for myself. This is me kind of stretching my skills. Um, I'm used to working in things like clay and sculpey, which is a lot easier to use. Um, whereas styrofoam, I haven't really pushed it that far, apart from when I did the, um, the Transformers arc video. And uh, if you haven't watched that, I would encourage you to go and check that out. So you're going to start with a block of styrofoam. This one is roughly three inches by three inches. And I think it's about two and a half inches thick. So the first thing to do is to just kind of smooth out the sides. Um, this will help later as you start to add some of the details. And just trying to get each edge as smooth as you possibly can. Then just using a ruler, just kind of make sure all the measurements are there. So I just want to kind of sketch out what the sides and the front will look like. Obviously the front, really easy. It's just going to be a rectangle shape as it's a chest, um, like a treasure chest. Um, whereas the side, I need that kind of arch shape on the top. So I'm just deciding where the lid will start and how deep I want the, I suppose, the box part of the chest to be. And then I'm finding the halfway point. And this will just help me to draw that arch as accurately as I can. Now you could to use something to draw around if you want to. That would work just as well. But by finding the halfway point there, I can just kind of draw that curve in freehand and do the same on the other side. And then that should be reasonably symmetrical. And of course, I need to do the same on the other side as well. So once you've done that, you might find that when you've measured out your kind of box or your chest, that, yeah, the styrofoam block that you started with wasn't quite the right size. So I'm just kind of cutting off the bits that I don't need just to kind of even it all out before I begin to add any kind of sculptural details on top. So the floristry knife is great for this because it's got this nice long blade. So it's really good for kind of just doing some nice kind of smooth cuts. Now it is worthwhile um, just kind of sharpening these knives and um, particularly the the very point of the blade um, if you don't do that it will kind of damage the styrofoam as you're cutting through so I'm just cutting away the excess 
just kind of the chunkier bits of the edges there. And it is worthwhile getting as close as you possibly can to your guidelines. But if you do a little bit at a time, you're going to kind of find it much easier than going straight in there, right up to the, you know, the line. Um, I would cut bits off and gradually work your way towards your guidelines. So I'm just using a fine grade sandpaper there just to kind of smooth this out. And this is especially important for the, the lid to get that kind of nice curve. And so now I just need to kind of draw back in where, again, the lid will finish. And I'm also trying to work out some of the details where they would go. So I'm going to divide my chest up into thirds. And I'm going to add these kind of bands going around the chest. Um, and if you do look at any of the kind of old kind of pirate kind of treasure chests, you'll see these kind of metal or brass bands that kind of wrap around the wooden chest. Um, there you go, as you can see on the image there. So it is worthwhile just kind of getting a reference photo to help you with that. So I've decided on about one and a half inches for the bottom part. That's, that's the height of the, I suppose, the main box bit where you would put the, the treasure or the, the valuables. And that gives me enough space then for the, the lid. So do mark that out on both sides of the box, just to make sure that those lines are as accurate as possible. And do make sure they join up to each other as well. As you can see there, I was just kind of looking at the box from an angle. I'm just adding a little mark on the corner. It just means that when I draw in my line, it's going to kind of flow around the edge of the box. And so what you can see here, these, those little lines at the edge, um, these kind of represent these bands that I was talking about. So I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch. Again, you can decide how thick or thin you want these bands to be. So it is worthwhile spending a bit of time on this bit because it will make your life a lot easier when you then come to kind of carve out some of these areas a little bit later. So notice I'm using a pencil just to kind of push into the styrofoam. You could use a felt tip if you didn't want to kind of make any marks on the styrofoam itself. If that kind of just helps you feel a bit more confident. And I suppose if you make a mistake, you could easily kind of sand that down. Um, and kind of redraw those lines if you need to. So each of those um, sections there, about an inch wide. So I just need to continue those bands down to the bottom of the chest as well. So there you go, I'm drawing in those bands at the bottom. So it's just kind of creating this border and a little bit of detail. So it's not, it doesn't just look like, you know, a wooden box. It does look like a chest. So as you can see here, I've just kind of made an indent. And this is just using a pencil. So I'm just using the... I suppose the edge of the graphite and I'm just kind of pushing down up to the guidelines that I put in place. So I'm just tilting the pencil at an angle and just making that indent. And that's just going to give the impression then that those bands are kind of raised from what will be like the kind of the, the wooden effect. So we're just doing that around the edge of each of those kind of rectangles. Now 
And then if you use one of the small square files, you'll notice the the rough part of the file. It kind of goes around the edges as well. So it's obviously not just on the each side. Um, it's on the very kind of tip as well. So I'm just using that tip just to kind of pull away the the middle or the bit that's been kind of left raised here. So now it's time to kind of separate this into two parts. So I've actually got a lid and, you know, the bottom of the box. So again, I'm just using the floristry knife and I'm just gently kind of scoring each edge just so as I start to cut into it a bit later, um, it's it's got somewhere to kind of guide the blade. Now, again, you could use a, a saw for this, just a little kind of coping saw or hacksaw. I've just decided to go for the floristry knife and I'm just carefully just kind of pushing that down through the styrofoam, starting with the corners. Now, you will see as I pull this apart, there's kind of, you know, dents and scuffs there. Um, it doesn't matter for what I'm doing here because I'm going to cut away a lot of that. Um, but if you didn't want that, um, again, it's worth sharpening the tip of the floristry knife there. So I've kind of just pulled out some of that styrofoam and I've just used the knife to do that and a file. And what I'm doing there, you can see those kind of little pink um, kind of sanding tools. Those are kind of, um, those are bits for a Dremel, you know, the electronic Dremel tools. Um, of course, I could attach them to a Dremel and that would make this a lot easier. But as the challenge was to do this by hand, I've just decided to use those kind of little sanding blocks just to kind of smooth out the bottom of this. Now, I don't want it to be completely smooth. The idea is that this is a creature. So although it looks like a wooden box from the outside with these kind of brass panels, um, on the inside, um, and kind of pushing out from the inside, is this going to be kind of organic creature? So it's going to be really just a big mafe. So I want this to kind of look like the inside of a mafe. I want it to look quite, I don't know what's the word, gummy, <laughs> if that's the word, you know, um, I want it to look bumpy, um, to look like it's got like a fleshy kind of finish to it. So I don't want it to be perfectly smooth inside as if it's a normal wooden box. So I also want to start making some teeth to kind of add into these kind of gums to kind of give that impression of this kind of gnashing mouth. So I'm just taking a little off cut of styrofoam and just very carefully, just peeling away little bits of the foam until I get this kind of pointy finish. Obviously, be careful not to cut yourself with a floristry knife. And then I've got here, this is kind of like a, a sponge sanding block. So you, it's not like a solid block. Um, and I find this quite useful. Um, particularly um, for kind of smoothing out this kind of styrofoam. So I'm just, it is fiddly, but I'm just using this kind of sand block just to smooth out that tooth as, you know, as much as I can. And then I can kind of get that in place. So I've just made a few holes with the Dremel sanding blocks. Again, just by hand. So I want a nice large tongue to come out of this, this kind of mafe piece. So again, I've just taken an off cut of styrofoam. I've drawn in this kind of wiggly kind of tongue shape. And then I'm just kind of carving away this a little bit at a time until I get the desired shape. The one thing I will say about this challenge video is, although my videos are aimed at beginners, um, it is about encouraging everybody to have a go. Um, whatever skill you have, you know, when you start this. Um, some of the techniques I'm using here, because they are more sculptural, 
some some of you might find a bit difficult but i would encourage you to have a go anyway because that's the only way your skills are going to develop is by challenging yourself so do have a go so as you can see i've really smoothed that tongue out there with the sanding block and it's got a nice smooth finish it looks a bit more organic and then i'm using those little sanding blocks just to kind of give that kind of groove that you get in the middle of the tongue, just to give it a bit more shape. And so I'm just kind of testing this in place to see how it looks. So the tongue's not quite um, hanging over the box in the way that I would like. It's a little bit too chunky. So I just want to take off a little bit more of the front of that tongue, just so it hangs over a bit easier. I'm just carving away the bottom there, just flattening that out a little bit and then testing that. And then again, you can sand it back down once you're happy. So on the lid, on the inside of the lid, um, I want, I'm not sure whether to do like a big eyeball, as you can see, I've drawn in there or to go with kind of lots of smaller eyeballs. So I've just kind of created... I suppose like the thickness of the the wooden lid and then I'm just using the knife there just to kind of cut away a little bit I've decided to go with these kind of smaller holes and I'm just using this kind of as you can see there, it's kind of like a little sphere or ball um, just to kind of push in some holes and then I'm going to add in a start of a foam ball inside each of those holes and those are kind of give the impression of these kind of eyeballs sticking out the bottom of this lid <clears throat> the nice thing about those kind of dremel tools and these actually the tools i've got there they were from just kind of a local um, diy store um they're not the official dremel tools because they are a lot more expensive but these work a treat for what I'm doing here. And they cost me, I think, about £5, something like that. In fact, I think they were a little bit cheaper than that. So I'm just using this kind of, I suppose it's got more of a, a point to it. Just to kind of create a bit more kind of detail in that lid. And then to make the eyeballs, I've just started off with a little square. And I'm just kind of cutting away each corner and the kind of sharper edges to get it as round as I possibly can with the knife and then I'm just going to finish that off with the sanding block and again it's really fiddly but it's it does the job so the nice thing actually about the soft sanding blocks is that you can kind of just rub that into the block you can actually roll it on top and it does most of the work for you so you can see those eyeballs are kind of fitting in those holes that i made earlier and so you've just kind of got this kind of otherworldly kind of creature effect kind of going on there as if this treasure box has come to life and it's going to kind of you know yeah it's going to eat you <clears throat> And it is worthwhile once you've got, yeah, your different features, just, yeah, decide where you want them, you know, what angle do you want them to be placed in. And then I'm using a, just a normal file, one of the little handheld files, the mini ones, just to make a hole into the gums. And then again, with those little sanding blocks, I'm just adding a little bit of shape around the gum there. Just so it's not flat you know if you if you look at your own gums you'll see how they kind of have those little bumps you know around each kind of tooth and then when i'm adding these teeth as you can see i've got kind of two pointy edges so i've got the i suppose the sharper point at the top so it looks a bit more menacing but then i have kind of rounded it down at the bottom just so it fits into that hole a bit easier 
The, that bit is quite fiddly because you have to make, well, if you're going to make one of these mimics anyway, you want to make lots of teeth. So it looks really menacing. So I also wanted to kind of carve out this kind of tentacle as if it's kind of breaking out of the the box. So I've just kind of drawn in a rough kind of tentacle shape. But I want it to look a bit more organic, a bit more three-dimensional. So I'm just kind of sketching out how it would kind of twist. Because otherwise it would look kind of too flat when you cut it out. Now this is quite fiddly, this one, because it's quite organic in its shape. And it's got this kind of worm-like kind of quality. Um, you do have to kind of get your head around where you're cutting or where you're not cutting. So just take your time on this and you'll just get a feel for it as you kind of start to carve the styrofoam. And of course, if you go wrong, it's great because you can just sand it down. So as long as you don't cut too much away in one go. So just starting with the edges, the sharper points. And there we go. It's starting to come together a little bit and it's got a little bit of a kind of a twisty kind of quality to it. So I just want to smooth that down a little bit so I can see what I'm working with. And then I can decide if I need to cut away any more. So I'm just using, again, one of the smaller files here. just to curve the edges a little bit more. I want it to look like this tentacle is kind of moving around. And that's quite tricky with a piece of styrofoam. So I feel this is getting there a little bit more. It's, again, it's kind of got a bit more of a twist to it. I'm just seeing how that looks on the side of the box there. Now, these are the rings that you have on the side of a treasure chest to kind of hold it. So as you kind of carry the chest, it makes it a bit easier to carry. So again, just taking a small piece of styrofoam. And this is actually a cotton wheel. And I'm just kind of pressing into that because it's about the right size that I need. And just use whatever you've got really in the house. But it just makes it a bit easier than drawing a circle by hand. And I'm just cutting away, again, the edges with the flourishly knife, as if you're kind of like peeling an apple. And then just using the, the sand block just to smooth out the edges. So we've made that kind of wheel shape now. And then I'm using one of the these kind of hard sanding blocks to kind of push in a hole. And then we've got the flat-ended block there which is just going to widen that hole, that hole, that hole a little bit um, and make it look more like we want it to look. And then I just want to kind of curve out the edges. So it looks like, again, like a brass um, ring, you know. Yeah, this is the really fiddly bit, trying to get that curve on the inside of the ring. Much easier on the outside, but on the inside is quite fiddly. So again, just take your time on this. This is not a quick um, task. You know, this is going to take you quite a long time to make something like this. But it's definitely worthwhile. So I just want to, again, create this kind of indent. So it looks like this chest is made out of wood. And then you've got these kind of brass kind of panels on top. So I'm just kind of scoring the edge and then very carefully at an angle, I'm just trying to take away a little bit of that styrofoam. I don't want to go in too deep. I just want to look like it's kind of recessed. Um, it is worthwhile using a scalpel for the corners of this because the floristry knife, and um, because it's a lot longer, it's a bit chunkier, it's quite hard to get into some of these kind of, you know, smaller areas. And then I'm using the flat-ended 
kind of um, the hand file just to smooth all of that out and you can see already it gives the impression that the kind of edges of the chest are kind of raised now so because this chest is meant to have you know it's it's come alive it's a mimic it's just, again a creature that is mimicking this chest i want to add this kind of large eyeball right in the middle and so just using the scalpel there just to start to make that eyeball look a little bit raised from the rest of the surface. Again, this is quite fiddly. So just using the point very carefully, just pull away some of that styrofoam so it leaves the, the kind of the eye socket really um, raised. And then just smooth that out until you're happy. These little sanding blocks are fantastic for getting into those tight areas. Particularly if you've got a set like I have. Because you'll, you'll find the right tool for the job. And then I'm using kind of a rounded hand file there with a point on the end just to get into those really tight areas and then that ball tool that i showed you earlier um that's great for kind of making the socket for the eyeball so just kind of really pushing into the styrofoam and it just gives you again that almost like a, an eyelid So I'm just pulling away as much of that as I can. Just trying to go a little bit deeper. So it does look like when I add the eyeball that it's it's recessed. So again, just like with the ring, um, I've just taken a bit of an off cut here. Pulling away the corners and the edges. And then I'm going to smooth this out to kind of create a half circle or kind of a little dome, which will act as the eyeball. So we don't need to create a whole ball shape because it doesn't need to go in that deep. It's just to give the impression. So I'm just trying to create that curve on each side. And then check it against the, the eye socket. As you can see, it's a little bit big. At the moment, so I need to cut that down a bit more. And there you go. So that kind of fits in much better now. And just keep working at it until it work. You know, it fits. So you can see I've added more of these kind of sharp teeth around the edge. And I've also added this kind of little kind of lock detail at the front there. And that's just using a pencil. So I've just drawn around or drawn the shape in there with a pencil. And then like you saw me um, do earlier with the panels, just kind of pushing the pencil to kind of create that indent. Um, that works a treat just around the edge of the lock. And it would just make it look a little bit raised again from the wooden surface. And then I'm just kind of adding a little bit of detail even to the rings there to make it look like it's kind of, um, it's got this kind of hinge. So I'm adding these kind of panels in. So it looks like the wooden chest is made up of these kind of wooden slats. And then adding a little bit of detail inside each one. Just a few lines with a pencil and a few kind of little, is it like the, the knots that you get in the wood? And as you can see already, this is really coming together now. With the eyeball there, the eyeballs inside, the fangs and the, you know, the extra teeth at the bottom. It's starting to kind of come alive. So I'm using kind of Gorilla Epoxy glue there, um, which is where, you know, you mix 
two different um these two different liquids i think there's a hard there isn't that and you mix the two together and it's really good for kind of getting a really strong bond um you could just use super glue um or even a hot glue gun would work reasonably well so you do have to work quite quickly if you're using the epoxy resin because it does harden within i think about 10 minutes something like that but I know it would give me a really strong bond, particularly when I'm fixing the the lid back to the the box part of the chest. Now, just to kind of give that time to set, I'm just kind of leaning it against something and just putting an off cut of styrofoam inside the mouth there, just so it doesn't kind of snap shut. And then there you go, here's the finished article. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope it inspires you to have a go at doing something a bit more sculptural. It could be making a mimic chest like I've done here. It could be making a fire hydrant like I mentioned in the tech chucker video or anything you want really for your display. But get yourself some reference material, get yourself an off cut of styrofoam and just have a play, have a go. Um, you'll be amazed at what you can do. So thanks for watching guys. Tune in again soon and um, yeah please leave a comment below um, whether that's of encouragement or what you've done yourself i'd love to hear it